Anyone who has fished Lake Erie knows these waters can get pretty hairy at times. The classic bucktail jig is one of the most successful and exciting ways of targeting early season walleye. No one knows who invented the bucktail jig, but drifting and bumping bottom with a jig dressed in natural deer hair has been catching limits of walleye as long as anyone can remember. This week on Fishing 411 TV, Mark and Jake get their jig on, catching a boatload of eating-sized walleye, while at the same time using Lake Erie to shake off those wintry blues. hooked up it took a matter of about five seconds <laughs> yeah I don't even think I got my jig to the bottom yet. <laughs> I was just trying to get the feel for this hair jig and the next thing I know bam bam Mr. Walleye is right there let me see if I can grab him and hoist him over this I know that's okay you know what they're all going back today anyway so um, the rule of thumb is when you have a landing net in a boat, you might want to use it, but uh, there you have it. One very, very quick fish. There's fish. It appears that we have sat down on a, on a good reef here. The focus of today's show is going to be talking about some of the tactics for catching walleyes on shallow water reefs in the springtime uh, when they're spawning and uh, two drops and two fish here just almost as fast as I can get up to the bottom. Looks like we've found ourselves a, a reef that's got a few fish on it. I'll let him for you, Dad. Thank you, Jake. I appreciate that. Let me grab him out of there real quick before that stinger hook gets tangled. There we go. And today isn't going to be about, it's not going to be about talking about massive sized fish. We're going to be talking about smaller male size, uh, male fish that are spawning here. Um, but it's going to be talking about numbers and the ability to catch fish, even in what are considered to be poor conditions. Uh, normally you think of Lake Erie and you think of trolling, and there is a trolling bite to be had here. But basically what we're dealing with right now is very dirty water. Trolling bite's not that good, uh, but the reef bite is going to be good. And that's what we're going to concentrate on today is getting ourselves some ears that are just get our string stretched. Hooked up here, Dad. Woo! There's a pretty heavy fish, Dad. I was going to say, that's hooked a, a little funny. It's a heck of a rod bend you got there. Yeah, right back on that area when we first sat down this morning, we had hooked a couple really quick and then made a long drift with nothing. So we pulled back up, set right back on that line again. Woo! Pulling good, man. Oh. 
good fish just hooked funny. Nice fish though. That's all right. We're gonna be putting all of our fish back today anyways. And that's kind of the name of the game with this, uh, this reef jigging. We're gonna show you exactly how to catch these fish on the reef today. But this is a, a really just a, a nice male. And that's primarily what we're gonna be catching on the reefs are these males. That's a thick, healthy, healthy fish right there. But what happens is these females will come up on the reef, they drop their eggs and they leave. They don't really stick around on these reef complexes too long. With the males, they hang out. This is the good spot to be. So you're gonna see a lot of these males. You're gonna have eater sized fish, you're gonna have nice quality fish like this one right here. And a lot of the times the name of the shallow water reef fishing is getting out here early. And, and you'll see that from the video today. We got out here very early uh, to catch these fish. So we had a little pod right when we sat down. We made a long drift, didn't get any more. So we went right back up, sat right on that line again, and boom, another fish. Special considerations are provided by the Lake St. Clair Walleye Association and by Stryker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepare. Special considerations are provided by Fish Hawk Electronics. Fishing without a fish hawk is called boating. So it's time to get set back up again. And this is a really a simple presentation. It's one of the reasons I love hair jig fishing so much. Basically all I have here is a jig, a little bit of colored hair, and I like to have a stinger hook on there because a lot of times these fish will just kind of short bite it and that stinger hook will catch a lot of the fish for you. And then this is a presentation where I feel like a spinning rod and reel is kind of the setup. Braided line is a very important aspect to this setup because you don't want to have any stretch in the line. Even though this is relatively shallow water, I want to be able to feel that jig hit the bottom. I want to be able to feel that little slight tongue when that fish bites it. One of the things I love most about it is how simple it is. I'm basically going to drop it to the bottom. I'm going to let that jig hit the bottom. I'm going to lift it up relatively aggressively. I'm going to drop it back down on a tight line. I got the boat horizontal and we're just kind of drifting here. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, the only color that matters on Lake Erie to a hair jig is purple. So you can have a pile of purple hair jigs come out here and catch a pile of fish. Jakers, hooked up, buddy. Whoa, Jakers, I got a big mess on this puppy. Nice fish, <laughs> Dad. <laughs> he came to the net quick. Nice <laughs> oh, fish. man. That's a nice one. All right, we'll get him out of the net. And for a male walleye in Lake Erie in the springtime, that is about as good as they get right there. That's a good one. <laughs> My goodness, man, and he just thunked it. He absolutely just thunked it. So if you're uh, looking for a springtime experience, rod in hand, where you get to feel the fish bite and set the hook, I highly recommend you check out the Reef Support Clinton. Lots of action. There you go, Dan. You know, one of the things about this style of fishing, you know, I've, it's really important in my opinion to have braided line, but I also think that a fluorocarbon leader is important. And it's not really because of the visibility of the water. You can tell the water's really dirty. Oh, that's a nice fish, Dad. That's a very nice fish. We'll pull that fish up, show them off. That is a really, really nice fish. Exactly what we're here looking for today. But when I was catching that fish, I was talking about how I have a fluorocarbon leader. And the reason why I feel like that's really important, it really to me has nothing to do with you know line shyness or, or the color of the water. And the thing with fluorocarbons, it has body. Braided line has no body. So when you're jig fishing, you flip that jig up. What'll happen if you connect direct from the braid to the jig is the jig will actually swing around and it catches on that braided line. So I like to use a little a fluorocarbon leader 12 to 15 pound test gives a little bit of extra body so when you rip that jig up and it falls back down it doesn't come up and foul on itself. The other important thing about the fluorocarbon is it's my breakaway system. If I am to snag on the bottom and I have to break that jig off it's a lot easier to break that fluorocarbon than it is to break braided line. So kind of my fail safe breakaway system gives that line a little bit of extra body and you don't seem to foul up that jig nearly as much. You know, we've had nearly perfect conditions today for hair jig fishing. The boat's been drifting along just nicely, just a gentle, slow drift, and uh, we've been catching fish steadily. But there's going to be days out here when the wind is going to pick up, and your boat is going to drift too fast, and it's going to be difficult to maintain contact with the bottom. In that situation, you need a piece of equipment called the drift sock, and I just happen to have one right here. About a 40-inch size diameter drift sock is about perfect for a boat that's going to be in that 20, 21-foot range. And when you deploy these, what 
they do is they slow the boat's drifting speed down so you therefore can have better contact with the bottom. And uh, normally I recommend at least one. Most guys will buy two of these uh, so they can fish in even windy conditions. So with the help of a drift sock, no matter how hard the wind blows, you can still get out here and catch these fish jigging. Got them coming your way. There we go. Over nice. the top of the, the windshield is not for the faint at heart. <laughs> <laughs> I got it done, but this, this is definitely not the place to land a fish with a landing net. <laughs> I'm going to pull this fish out of the landing net and show them off. Again, that is what we're looking for today. We're looking for these males right here. And the nice thing about this style of fishing is normally you're looking at a lot of bites. You're going to stay busy, and so far this morning we've stayed pretty darn busy. And we're using hair jigs, but that's the tool. It's a very simple presentation. doesn't take a lot of equipment, a lot of money invested to come out here and catch a pile of walleye. Lake Erie is famous for its western basin spawning substrate and that's exactly what we were doing is we were fishing on some of that world-class spawning habitat. Uh, there's lots of it available but what most people don't realize is these reefs are very dominant. For example, you could be sitting in 30 feet of water and then suddenly find the boat up in the shallow with 8, 10 or 12 foot of water. Most of the fish that we caught today were in that 14 to 17 foot range um, but that varies from day to day. Sometimes they might be up on the top of the reef, sometimes they might be in deeper water. But if you move around and keep checking these reefs structures, you're going to find fish, and when you find fish, you're going to have a good time. Oh, I'm nice the Stinger. I'm nice the Stinger. Thank you, nice. Gookers. They're all about the same size here, it seems like, but uh, every once in a while you get one that's a little bit better grade. It's not about size. It's about action. It's about getting out and uh, shaking out the winter cobwebs. And um, if a guy was inclined to keep fish, I mean, you can't get a better one than that. That's, that's absolutely a fish sandwich right there. Uh, but we're going to appease the fish gods today. It is spawning season. We're going to let them all go. Special considerations provided by Abyss Battery. Power your pursuit. Special considerations are provided by the Ultimate Sports Show Tour, Michigan's premier sports shows. Yeah, baby, look at that. Travelite Truck Campers presents the 411 on fishing. You know, at Fishing 411 TV, we travel a lot. We go to a lot of really remote places. It, the adventure of it is a ton of fun. But one of the things is for us, we're filming, which means we have a lot of camera equipment. It means we have a lot of electronics that we have to keep charged up on the road, even in super remote areas. Uh, but you know, one of the things is, is even if I'm not filming, I tend to have a lot of different types of electronics with me. I have my phone with me. I have my GPS's with me. I have things that need to be charged when I'm in remote areas. And one of the cool things and product that we've been using is this Abyss Power Pack. It's 1600 watts of power. Let me tell you, it's basically a lithium generator. Instead of having to carry that big gas generator with us everywhere we go, this thing weighs 40 pounds and has all the power we need. It's really a nice system. It gives you hookups like the USB ports. It has USB 3C like for quick charging, normal hookups, so like a normal duplex plugs. And you also have like a 12 volt cigarette type style plug on it. The nice thing about it is there's a digital display right on this and it shows you what your battery percentage is. So the Abyss Power Pack has pretty much taken the remoteness out of a lot of these trips. We can still bring all of these electronics that we normally like to use with us. We can keep them charged up and we can keep going for a long time. So the cool thing about this system, keeps you charged up, plenty of juice to last you your entire trip when you're going on a remote trip. There's the fish, that one absolutely whacked it. When you're on them, the action is fast and furious, and when you're not on them, it's because simply you are not on them. You have to save a waypoint when you hook a fish and go back and fish those waypoints. That's another really high quality yeah, fish. Yeah, very nice fish. Yeah. Really nice quality yeah. fish. This, there is, you go. this is as good as it gets in Lake Erie for males, that's for sure. One of the things I would recommend you think about the stinger hook is critically important in this particular instance the fish bit and you got him on the main jig um, but a lot of these bites are going to come on the stinger so you have to be running that stinger hook that's a good thing the bad thing about a stinger hook is it's going to follow on zebra mussels there's just no way to avoid that so if you go 10 minutes maybe even five minutes and you haven't gotten a bite you might want to reel up and check your jig to make sure you don't have a zebra mussel accidentally snagged on the stinger hook it happens quite commonly and once that happens you're not getting any bites whatsoever so Keep checking those lines and, uh, and you'll be productive and you'll get more fish like that. There he goes. 
Let's talk for a second about fishing scents. If you've watched Fishing 401, you know that we use an awful lot of pro here. And here's our go-to, it's called Super Gel. The reason we like this is because it's got a really strong natural scent to it. It's real greasy and it stays on the lures very well. But it doesn't work good for what we're doing today. When you're fishing with a hair jig, if you use this greasy Super Gel, it'll mat down the hair on the jig and it won't pulsate properly. You just don't get good action out of the jig. So the pro Cure Super Gel is not what we're using today. We're gonna put that aside today. And we got two products that we can talk about here. So the rooster tail spray scent that I have here in my right hand or the water soluble pairing oil that I have here in my left hand are the better options. And what's happening here is that both of these products are water soluble so you can squirt them on, you get good scent, but it washes off fairly quickly. So you have to reapply this every 10 to 15 minutes, whereas the super gel, we typically only apply it once every 30 minutes. But this will not mat down the hackle or the hair or the feathers on the jigs and it makes it allows it to pulsate naturally, but still keep that natural scent spring in the water. It's cool and you find you find a little pot of them. Now on this hump it seems like there's fish all over it but you find little areas where they want to bite and then it's all hands on deck. Oh that's a nice fish dad. Woo! Put a lot of strain on that stinger. There he is. Nice that's a good fish. I know it kind of sounds like a broken record but just how important that stinger hook is for this presentation. Now that fish bit it you see that's, that hook actually came in his mouth, but that stinger hook right there, that's really what stuck him. It's really an important part of this presentation. They just kind of swat at it, you know, you don't really get, every once in a while you'll get one to really choke it, but for the most part they're just kind of swat at this presentation, and that stinger hook is what gets these fish in the boat. So I'm idling back up to make another pass, and what we're going to do today is we're going to make pass after pass after pass over pieces of structure. Now these are reef complexes out here on Lake Erie, that these walleye, April time frame, they're actively spawning on these reef complexes, and they're relatively shallow water. Now in this case, the tops of these reefs have been anywhere to 12 to 14 feet of water, with deep water all the way around it. And you can see on my graph here, that basically all we're doing is just drifting with the wind right over the top of these reef complexes, turning the boat sideways to the wind and dead drifting within the wind itself. And so one of the things that I feel like is super important for this style of fishing is one, getting out here early. You'll hear that a lot on this episode because this shallow water bite tends to be a low light type bite. The other thing that's very important is when you're fishing over top of these reef complexes, that when you go back up to make your next pass, to either idle back up like I'm doing right now, or run all the way around in deeper water to come back up again. You definitely don't want to shut these fish off, and in the shallow water, running right over top of those fish can shut these fish off. So in this case, all I'm doing is a nice, slow idle back up. It gives you a chance to maybe have a drink or have a snack before you go and drift back over these fish again. But remember, in shallow water, don't run over top of those fish. You're not going to be happy when they shut off and don't want to bite anymore. Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems, your fishing equipment experts. Special considerations are provided by ProCure, ruthlessly effective bait sets. Oh, oh, we are just picking away, picking away, having a great time and uh, catching these fish. Here he comes, Vickers. Whoa! They are spunky, aren't they? Are they are spunky. That's why people talk about walleyes not being a very good fighting fish. Actually, on light tackle like this, they're a lot of fun to catch. A lot of fun There we to go, fight. Dad. Oh, we popped off. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So. <laughs> not my biggest one for the day, but uh, man, we are stacking them up. Stacking them up. Back he goes. You know, when it comes to fishing these hair jigs, I feel like the best cadence or what I've had the most success with is what I like to do is I like to lift up relatively aggressively, pop that jig up off the bottom. And what's happening is that hair is really undulating and pulsating in the water and you get that action. And then what I'm doing is I'm actually tight lining that jig back down to the bottom. So I'm giving it a pretty good hop and a pretty good pop. But then I got that jig on a tight line and I'm letting that jig down on a tight line. When I feel it hit bottom, I go ahead and give it another pop again. And then again, let that jig down on a tight line. And because we're drifting, that line is kind of angling out behind the boat. I'm not perfectly vertical. I'm not fishing directly below the boat. And for me, it seems to be the best presentation getting these hair jigs to work. Now the bites are gonna come one of two ways. One, it's gonna be when that jig hits the bottom, when you lift up, 
there's just going to be weight there because that fish pegged it to the bottom and you didn't feel that fish bite. But when these fish bite on a tight line as you're letting that jig down, they will just about rip the rod right out of your hand. It is a very fun way to catch these fish. So it's kind of a combination of a rip style jig and a tight line jig all in one. It's a big smallie. Smallmouth like air jigs too. I'm going to get him off back in the water here quick here so he does well. Woo! That fish bit it while I was lifting it up and he just absolutely railed it. There you go, Jakers. Thanks, Dad. You know, one of the things I, I just can't stress enough how cool this fishery is. When I hear guys talk about Lake Erie, the number one thing you think of is trolling. And that is a great presentation, don't get me wrong. You're going to catch a lot of fish on Lake Erie trolling. But this time frame, this April time frame on Lake Erie when these fish come up to the reefs, it is so much fun to catch a pile of fish with a rod and hand style of fishing. Uh, and the other really cool thing about this is that you can come out here in a lot of different styles of boats, right? Like a lot of times I hear when you think of big water fishing, you got to have a big boat. We're not very far away from shore right now. Most of these reef complexes are very close to shore. So you can come out here in a 16, 17 foot boat and be very safe. And if the weather gets bad, you can quickly get back to shore. This just gives you a really good option for something to come out and do in the springtime. Pretty good one on here. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, that's a nice fish. That's a really nice fish. That was a very good fish. Man, we have a lot of fun today. Yeah, that's another really good Lake Erie walleye. We have caught a pile of these fish on the reef here. It is so much fun to catch these fish out here in April. Hey, my name's Jake Romanek. Thanks for watching Fishing 4-in-1. If you get a chance, come out here to Lake Erie, fish these reefs in the month of April. You are going to catch a pile of Lake Erie walleye. Closed captioning is provided by Precision Trolling Data. Fishing 411 TV is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, StarCraft Marine, Suzuki Marine, J Sporting Goods, Smooth Move Seats, Niagara Falls, USA, Eagle Claw, Bill Lewis, and Yakima Bait Company. That 45 degree angle, because you're not fishing directly under the boat, you're actually kind of fishing. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got there, Jaker? Uh, 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 I don't want to break off your hair, Jake. That is a, that's a donkey.